We are back here on Girl Talk and I'm really excited. I am in Beaufort at Beaufort Memorial and we are here with Dr. Marlena Mattenley. Thank you very much for joining us. Yes, thank you, you for having are me. an OBGYN and we have had a lot of fun talking sort of before the segment started today. Um, I'd love to know a little bit about your background. So I grew up in Florida and Kentucky. Mm -hmm. I went to college at Belhaven, which was no, Belhaven University in Jackson, Mississippi, and then University of Kentucky for medical school and Indiana University for residency in OBGYN. How did you decide on the practice of OBGYN? Um, actually, it was on the bottom of my list when I first started medical mm -hmm. school. And then as I realized what I wanted out of a practice, I loved the combination of primary care and surgery and um, obstetrics and being able to care for the whole woman throughout her, um, throughout her life. You know, it's interesting that you say that because I think for me, I value another woman as my primary care doc. And from a gynecologic standpoint, it's the one consistent thing I've done throughout my mm -hmm. lifespan. And is, is and I guess you develop a relationship. I mean, that's kind of the point. Definitely, I enjoy being able to develop that relationship with my patients, even with my short time here in the past year, just being able to take care of a patient for an annual exam and then mm -hmm. getting excited when she comes back with her pregnancy and then being able to deliver her as well. So. Well, I have to ask you, we were talking before and I've got a daughter who has been married for three or four years and is thinking about starting a family. And of course, all she's talking about right now is Zika virus. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's everywhere you turn, it's ubiquitous. Talk to me a little bit about how you deal with some of these things that kind of occur in a timely fashion. What do we do? How do we, if we're going, if she's thinking about getting pregnant, mm -hmm. words of wisdom. So um, with the Zika virus, of course, they haven't actually found um, any, or haven't had any cases um, from mosquitoes here in the U.S. Most mm -hmm. of the cases have been um, travel associated, but we've been advising our patients to avoid traveling to those countries that have the Zika virus um, for sure. I've actually had some patients cancel some vacations, okay. unfortunately, in order to avoid um, those countries, if they're planning on becoming pregnant or if they are already pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, and then precautions you can take um, living here in the low country, for sure. Mosquito um, mask. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, trying to wear more long sleeve um, shirts and long pants if you're going to be outside, um, especially in the marsh area or right. other areas um, where there might be a lot of mosquitoes. Um, using um, DEET um, containing mm -hmm. mosquito repellent um, that's safe for um, pregnant and lactating. Um, women as well to try to help um, prevent mosquito bites. Okay. Is it something that you are concerned about? And if, if you have these newly pregnant young women, mm -hmm. are, are you are you advising them? And Is it something to pay attention to? It definitely is. Um, I think a lot of our newly pregnant patients, when they go through their initial nursing visit and then their initial OB visit, um, we're either talk to them about it or they're going to bring it up if they're thinking about traveling to those places for sure. Mm -hmm. I know I've had several women ask me about vacations or just vacations here, or going to the beach, what they should be concerned about, and precautions they should take. If someone is pregnant, mm -hmm. then do you monitor them for that? Or, I mean, do you, do, when they come in for their monthly uh, checkups, are you like, do you have any mosquito bites? Or, <laughs> <laughs> you know, how do you know? I mean, are there screening techniques? Not necessarily. The main screening is just asking about their history. Okay. Um, at least at this point, since we haven't actually had any mosquito-borne cases here in the United States. Um, if we know someone that has been exposed, possibly, possibly exposed to the Zika virus, been around um, someone who was Who's recently diagnosed, then um, those are the types of patients that will report for testing. Um, we'll do more frequent ultrasound monitoring, okay. looking for findings like microcephaly that is associated with the Zika virus. When you, uh, when someone is pregnant now, because in today, when I was, you know, back in the good old days, it was you were three months pregnant before you even recognized that you were pregnant mm -hmm. half the time. What is the protocol now? How often? How often do patients come in? When do they start their first mm -hmm. visits? What does that look like? Yeah, so for patients um, who find out pretty early nowadays right. that Next they're day. pregnant, <laughs> <laughs> um, usually they'll come in and have their initial OB nursing visit around six to eight weeks okay. and get their confirmation ultrasound to confirm exactly how far along they are, what their due date is, mm -hmm. and then they'll see a provider within the next couple weeks, around eight to 10 weeks for their initial um, doctor or provider visit. 
And then for that first and second trimester, it's every month. Okay. Um, third trimester, 28 weeks, it's every two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then the last four weeks of pregnancy, it's every week. So we can monitor the patients more closely. Talk to me about, I'm, I'm kind of all over the board, but I think your practice is very broad spectrum. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that we at least touch on different things and get you back another time so we can talk more specifics. Mm -hmm. So we talked about um, people who are of childbirthing age, if you will. If you are, um, at what age do you like to see a woman come in for their first visit? For just their annual Yeah, just an annual in. checkup. And I think the reason I ask you is I work mm -hmm. with a lot of adolescents. Mm -hmm. And the girls that are probably 15 through 22. Mm -hmm. And it's been fascinating for me um, how few of them mm -hmm. have had an appointment with um, a gynecologist, an OBGYN, where I think it would be very helpful mm -hmm. from an information and education point of view. Can you share with me a little bit about your point of view on that or the recommendations? Um, for, it's kind of, it depends on what you're looking for out of the visit. Mm -hmm. For pap smear screening, which is cervical cancer screening, that starts at age 21. Ah. Um, so those patients, or those girls, are when that, once they turn age 21, then that's when they get their official annual exam okay. with their pelvic exam and everything as well. Um, but definitely, I encourage patients to be, so be seen sooner, especially if they're thinking about becoming sexually active. Mm -hmm. So we can talk about STD screening and prevention. Um, and contraception as well. It's really interesting to me. You've been, you're wonderful. I think you're very user friendly, which is really important. <laughs> well, I think to anyone, whether they're, you know, 62 or 16, I think yeah. it's really important to come in and see um, the doctor. And I, I'm really excited that you joined us today. She's pretty cool, you guys. We want to thank you all for joining us here on Girl Talk. Have a wonderful week. Bye bye. Beaufort Memorial Obstetrics and Gynecology Specialists see patients in three locations. Bluffton, Beaufort, and Port Royal. To make an appointment with Dr. Marlena Mattenley or any of the OBGYN providers, call 843-522-7820. For more information, visit BeaufortMemorial.org.